Lesson 6-6, six, six, Customary Units of Weight. The main focus in this lesson is for you to be able to estimate the weights of objects, to use measurement scales to answer questions, and for you to be able to convert U.S. customary measures of weight. But first, let's start with our mental math and fluency. It asks, 250 is how many times as great as 25? If I was going to have to write this as a problem, I would write it 250 is how many times as great as 25. So really, 25 times what equals 250? Well, hopefully you know that 1 times 25 is 25. And then I have this lovely 0 here. So my answer is 10. Again, if I was to write the next problem, 350 is how many times, here's my unknown, I'm just using a question mark now, as great as 35. Again, three, 35 times 1 is 35, and then I have this lovely 0 again, so my answer once again is 10. Mrs. Whitmore's class has 420 pencils. This is how many times as great as in Mr. Davenport's class with 42. So if I wrote that as an unknown, I would write 420 pencils is how many times as many as great as 42. So what is 42 times what is equal to 420? Hopefully you're seeing the pattern and know that it is 10. In Unit 4, you learned about measuring mass in grams and kilograms. In the United States, we use the U.S. customary system, which means weight in units includes tons, pounds, and ounces. Look at the scale. Zero pounds is zero ounces, but one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So if I'm converting pounds to ounces, I would multiply by 16. So two pounds times it by 16 is 32. Three pounds times it by 16 is 48, and so on. This is showing you tons converted to pounds. So if I have one ton, I multiply it by 2,000 to get 2,000 pounds. Two tons, I multiply by 2,000 to get 4,000 pounds. Three tons, I multiply by 2,000 and I get 6,000 pounds, and so forth. So would a stapler weigh about 7 ounces or 7 pounds? I always like to think about a four pound bag of sugar. Would my stapler weigh more than that or less than that? Oh, definitely less. So my stapler must weigh about seven ounces. Might a car weigh one ton or 2,000 pounds? You should be looking at this scale and seeing that that's kind of a trick question because one ton is 2,000 pounds. So that is the same weight. Be prepared always to explain your answers if I ask. So weight can come in tons, pounds, and ounces in the U.S. customary system. Now you're going to turn to Math Journal page 204. Math Journal page 204 is an ACI. It is an assessment check-in. So please finish this page and then bring it back to me so that I can check to see if your answers are correct. 
what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using those measurement scales and converting tons into pounds, pounds into ounces on this page. So complete math journal page 204. Bring it back to me so I can check it and then you can turn the recording back on to continue. Pause the recording now and do math journal page 204. So I'm going to scoot right through the answer key because you should have brought it back to me and I should have checked it. So if we picked four bags of apples, each bag weighed two pounds, how much do the four bags weigh? Well, again, if I was writing this as a number problem, I would put, well, I have the four bags of apples, and if each weighs two pounds, my unknown would look like this. So I simply need to take four times two to come up with eight. Notice it wrote the units down. What were we looking for? We were looking for the weight. Well, how did we know it was pounds? Because it said so here, each bag weighed two pounds. So again, we could look at the scale and notice that two pounds, I'm sorry, that two pounds per bag would be 32 ounces. But if I had eight pounds, I would come down here and do eight times 16 and come up with 128 ounces. So how could we use this measurement scale to find the number of ounces? We would just look at the pounds and then again at the lower one, which is ounces, which was simply multiplying it by 16. The next thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to go to Math Journal page 205. I'm going to read the problems to you for this page, but if you can read them on your own, go ahead and pause the recording, finish the page, go up and check it in the answer key, and then turn it back on and you can fast forward through the next part that I'm going to be reading for some students who need it. Number one says, or I'm sorry, number five. A Compsonagathus dinosaur weighed approximately eight pounds. And the next one weighed approximately two pounds. About how many more ounces did the first dinosaur weigh than the last dinosaur? Well, it's asking me for two things. So if the first dinosaur weighed eight pounds, I'd write down A equals eight pounds. And if the next one weighed, and I'm sorry I did that incorrectly, that should be C. And the next dinosaur weighed two pounds. That gives me a total of six pounds. But that isn't what it asked me. It asked me how many ounces is that? So what I need to do is I need to go up, look at six, six pounds, and I see that that's 96 ounces. So I would fill 96 in the box. Make sure when you're reading these word problems that you're paying close attention to what they are asking you. Number two. Number six, and I'm going to probably mispronounce these dinosaur names, so I'm just going to say this dinosaur, and when you write it down, you'll know what to write. The first dinosaur weighed approximately four tons, so the first dinosaur starts with a P equals, and I'm going to put 4T for four tons, and travel in herds. What would the weight of eight of those dinosaurs B in pounds. Well, first, I'm going to have to take the four tons times the eight, which gives me 32 tons. Now I have to figure out 32 tons. It wants it in pounds. If I want to convert that into pounds, I have to multiply it by 2,000. You should have been able to look at your scale to figure that out. And that's going to give me 
the pounds, which is abbreviated LBS, that I need for this answer. Please, please do the math and then continue on to number seven. The next one reads again, this dinosaur weighed approximately eight pounds, while a sizosaurus weighed 15 pounds. About how many total ounces would 13 of the first dinosaur weigh, along with six of the sizosaurus? So you're putting these two numbers together, because that's what it said. It's going to be 13 of those, and it's going to be six of this one. And then you're going to add them together to come up with a total of pounds. But then I'm going to have to multiply it by 16 to get ounces. Pause the recording now and do number seven. Number eight. Scientists have discovered that they overestimated the weight of the bronchiosaurus. At first, they believed the bronchiosaurus weighed 35 tons. But after using new methods, they now believe it weighed 25 tons. What is the difference in pounds? Right away, you should have noticed when it says difference, you should know you're going to be subtracting 35 tons minus 25 tons. Get your answer, but they want it in pounds. So you're going to be multiplying it by how many pounds are in a ton. Pause the recording now and do number eight. Number nine says, a nano tyrannus weighed about a thousand pounds. How many tons would 15 nano tyrannuses have weighed? So again, you're taking 15 times the thousand pounds, and then you gotta convert that into tons. Show your math down here on the lines so that I can see that you understood what to do. Pause the recording now, finish page 205. When you have checked it back in the answer key, if you've gotten any wrong, please bring it to me so that I can show you what you did wrong and then turn the recording back on for the next instruction. What you're going to do next is math journal page 203. Again, for those of you who need it read to you, I'm going to read it to you. For those who don't, you may pause the recording now to finish that page. As you're noticing on the screen, I'm flipping through the pages that you are not going to need right now. So here's where we're at. A math journal, page 203, the first math box is asking you to fill it in with greater than, less than, or equal to. And then D is asking you to order it from smallest to largest. Pause the recording down now and do math box one. Math box two tells you to use a straight edge. So please get out something to use as a straight edge. Then draw the other half of the symmetric shape. So you need to draw the other half in the lower box here. Pause the recording now and do number two. Number three, a new pencil is about 18 centimeters long. What is another way to say 18 centimeters? You're going to need to look at your scale to see how many millimeters centimeters would equal, or am I going to be looking at meters or kilometers? There is only one answer to problem three. Pause the recording and do it, please. Math box four. Christy drinks 14 glasses of milk each week. Her older brother drinks three times as many glasses in a week as she does. How much milk does Christy's brother drink in all? Use the numbers given. Show the number model with the unknown and then give me the exact answer. And math box five reads, Mrs. Rafe's class counted to the nearest half loaf of number of loaves of bread each family ate last week. Plot the data on the line plot below and use it to answer the questions. What is the difference between the greatest amount of bread eaten by one family and the least amount? Show your number model with the unknown and give the answer. Make sure to fill in the title for this graph. The final thing you're going to do is Math Masters, page 238. Please go to the file and get page 238 out. Complete that on your own. Bring it up to me so that I know you understood this lesson. That's the end of lesson 
666.